Hi guys, today I'm going to walk you guys through um, assignment 8, question 1. So this question is uh, asking you whether the material of a cast iron structure is going to fail uh, based on two different criteria. The first of which is the maximum principal stress criterion and the second one with, uh, is the Coulomb Bohr criterion. So before uh, proceeding to uh, check with two different criterion, uh, the very first step is to get the principal stress from the sigma, uh, from the normal stress and the shear stress. So uh, first of all, let me just write the formula to calculate the um, uh, principal stress. So sigma 1 and sigma 2 equals uh, to sigma xx plus sigma yy divided by 2 plus or minus uh, sigma xx minus sigma yy divided by 2 squared plus uh, uh, shear stress xy square and then square root the whole thing so basically uh, sigma x x equals to 0 sigma y y equals to negative 180 megapascals and tau x y equals 200 oh, 200 megapascals oh, just some moment yes okay stop support So when you plug everything back into the equation, you will get something like negative 180 divided by 2 plus or minus 180 divided by 2 squared plus 200 squared. So you would get sigma 1 equals to 129.3 megapascal. Sigma 2 equals to negative 309 oh, and 9.3 megapascals just keep in mind that sigma 1 is always larger than sigma 2 and it's always larger than sigma 3 um, it's just a um, convention it's larger than sigma 2 and larger than sigma 3 if there's any sigma 3 so once we figure out the principal stress we are using the maximum principal stress criterion to check uh, if the material is going to fail for part A. So for part A, we are going to use um, this equation to verify whether, whether the material would fail or not. Uh, and it's not working again, so let me just see. So it works then. So sigma one, absolute value of sigma one equals to, um, in fact, uh, sigma one has to be smaller than the ultimate stress in order to uh, not fail. The pen is not working properly. Really. So, and smaller than sigma. Okay. So, we got um, absolute value of principal stress 1 equals to 129.3 which is smaller than uh, 290. Remember, for the ultimate uh, normal stress, we always get the smaller value, because if we exceed the smaller uh, ultimate shear, uh, ultimate normal stress, then it will be considered as failure. So 
since the normal stress one is smaller than the ultimate stress, uh, so it's not going to fail. However, for normal stress two, which is 309.3, is larger than 290. So it's going to fail for sure. So in other words, it's a uh, based on the ultimate shear stress requirement, uh, maximum stress requirement is going to fail. Okay, for case B, however, we are using another equation to verify if the, if the failure will occur. Um, this time we are using sigma one over ultimate stress intention. So this little superscript T denotes the ultimate stress intention uh, minus sigma, I mean, uh, uh, um, principal stress two over ultimate stress compression. So this superscript means compression. So compression and tension. So to see if it's smaller than one, if it's smaller than one, it, it means it's not going to fail. So let me just plug in all those numbers. So 129.3 divided by 290. So where the 290 comes from? So it might be really small, but uh, there's a small superscript T here. So that's the ultimate stress intention, which is 290. So here. And then minus uh, normal stress 2, which is 300, uh, negative 309.3 uh, divided by, uh, what's the value? 650. So in case you guys didn't see clearly, uh, that's the superscript for the compression for ultimate stress. So, so ultimate stress in compression is 650. So it equals to 0 0.922, which is smaller than one. So for the more uh, polygon diagram, it looks something like this. So we are getting the value of 0 0.922 mean means that it falls within it falls within this envelope so anywhere be beyond this envelope means there's going to be failure so since 0 0.92 is less than 1 which means it's not going to fail so hopefully you guys will understand um, and make sure you guys read the lecture notes